Hi, my name is Polly Frenchu, and I'm with the Electrical Construction and Maintenance Department here at Dunwoody. Today we're going to learn about sine waves and AC circuits. Okay, now that you've learned AC waveforms and you've also learned all about instantaneous voltage, let's take it the next step and actually look at our peak, what goes into creating that peak voltage, RMS, and average. Now these are all various voltage values based upon the same waveform we have right here. Now when we talk about a peak voltage, obviously we are talking about this portion of our sine wave. So from our 0 to our 90, we actually hit that maximum induced voltage or the maximum voltage that's going to be created based upon the type of machine we have, the field we have, how fast things are moving. So when we actually look at this E peak, we are only hitting it twice within that original full alternation or cycle. What we measure or what we actually gauge off of we call E RMS. Now RMS stands for root mean square. Okay. Sounds pretty mathematical. Root means squared. What it stands for is I can't sit and take just those peak values when I'm using my voltage because I only hit it every split second. Okay. It's not very long that I'm actually here or here, but I'm spending a lot of time getting there, coming back down, going back up, and coming back down. So I'm hitting all these various points in between. What root means squared means is I'm able to take every single one of these degrees or portion of a degree and I'm able to square them because obviously I don't want a negative value in there. I want them all to be positive. So by squaring that, I'm able to get them all positive values. I'm able to take them, square them, add them all together, divide them by the number of what I did. So if I did 360 degrees, I would divide by 360 degrees, and then I would take the square root. That is what RMS stands for. That's what it's based on. It's basically an average of all 360 degrees of my cycle, including positive and negative values. Now the RMS is basically 0.707 percent or 70.7 percent of that peak value. So if I take all those instantaneous voltage values, once again, square them, add them all together, divide them by the number I took and square root them, I would come up with 70.7 percent of that peak. So what that means to me is if I have a peak voltage of 100 volts, that means my ERMS then would be 70.7 volts. So this is what my meters would measure. That is what I test when I put my prongs into a receptacle. That's what I would check for my lighting. Is that 70.7 volts? That is what I would actually get when I take all of them and put them together. For instance, let's say I, I sit and I put my meter into that receptacle there. That receptacle would give me 120 volts. So I would be able to read 120 volts on my meter by plugging it into a receptacle. I know that my peak value is basically going to be much larger than my RMS. In fact, my RMS is 70.7% of that peak. So if I take and do the reciprocal of 0 0.707, I am able to come up with a value of 1.414. Okay, so in essence, my RMS of 120 volts that peak value is going to be 1.414 times larger, or my RMS is 70.7% less than my peak. So by taking my 120 volts times 1.414, I'm able to get that peak value of 169.68 volts turn it around and let's say I have E peak of 169.68, I'm then able to take that 169.68 times the value difference which is 0.707 of my RMS 
and I would then come up with my 120 volts. So RMS is basically that average value, taking them as all positive values, to get the voltage that we effectively use on a day-to-day -day basis. We have one other form, and this one is called E average. Okay, now our E average is basically taking each one of these instantaneous voltages along our positive value of the cycle, so our positive side of the cycle. So basically we are taking 0 to 180 degree points along the sine wave to come up with our average. Our average is based upon the fact of taking each and every one of these instantaneous voltage values, adding them together, and instead of dividing it by 360, like we did with our RMS, we're actually dividing it by 180 degrees to come up with our average. Now our average, comparatively to our peak, is 63.7% of that peak value. Okay, another thing about our average is it is equal to 0.9 of our RMS value, or effective. Okay, average is usually what we would find with a DC circuit. So when I have 120 volts DC, I'm averaging about 63.7% of the actual voltage I would have with an AC circuit. If I have 63.7% of that peak, I can then use that formula, E average is equal to E peak times 0.63. Seven. So plugging in those values, we know we have a peak value of 169.68. We have an average difference of it of 0.637, and that would give me an average value of 108 volts. So that 120 volts that you get out of your receptacle at home, or that you plug your light into, or you plug your computer in, is actually averaging 108 volts, but is actually peaking at almost 170 volts. So at every sine wave, we are hitting that peak value. There's one other value that we look at, and that is our E peak to peak. And all that is is basically taking that maximum voltage of our positive side of the sine wave and taking our maximum voltage at the negative portion of our sine wave and adding the two together. So by taking that 169.68 volts times 2, we then would be able to come up with our peak-to-peak -peak value. Our peak-to-peak -peak of this would be 339, roughly 339 volts. Okay, one of the reasons why we want to know our peak and our peak-to-peak -peak voltage is the fact that we have to actually decide what kind of insulation we're going to have around the wires that we put in. Our wire installation is based upon the amount of voltage that we'll be um, up applying to it or the pressure that's going to be applied to that conductor. So insulation is based upon my voltage. I also have voltage ratings for my capacitors. I also have voltage ratings for my resistors. So everything has a certain amount that it can handle. So when you're talking about an AC circuit, unlike a DC, 120 volts is 120 volts. 120 volts is either on or it's off. When you get into an AC circuit, it is actually rising well beyond that which we measure. So we measure 120, we're actually getting 170 volts on each and every one of those conductors every time that cycle is cycling. And we would hit it twice in each cycle. So in conclusion, this is why you want to know all these various points and how we come about in gauging these uh, different voltage values for your study of electricity. If you have any questions or you need any further assistance at some time, they do have tutoring available down in the Elfman Student Success Center uh, for you to come down and visit at any time. Uh, tutors are usually around pretty much most of the day. Thank you.